Well, good morning and welcome to the Carp Project Volume 2. This year, you join me at a new syndicate lake that I've never fished before. It's on the Carthagena complex and is known as the Brook Lake. I say I've never fished it before. It used to be day ticket and I did a 48 hour session about 10 years ago. So any prior knowledge I've got is long gone and long forgotten, trust me. But what I do know is how well the fish are grown. There's a couple of 40 pounders, there's loads of 30 pounders, even more 20 pounders, but the best thing is they're all absolute bangers. I can't wait to get started and have a little go. As always though, having three nights ahead of me, I'm not just gonna rush into a decision. I wanna find some fish, see if there's any opportunity for, for surface fishing, for getting something out of the edge, you just never know. But to do that, I need to find the fish. Let's go and see where they are. Right, we've found ourselves a little starting point. I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up for the night in here or not, but I would say my gut says we probably will. This lake is kind of split into two halves and the other half, whilst it's got another couple of anglers already set up in there, I've not seen too much in the way of life from, from a carp point of view. But round in here, couldn't be more opposite. I've seen three or four fish now milling around under the surface. But what I've also seen is plenty of patches of bubbles coming up in lots of different areas. So I actually think there's quite a few carp present. There aren't many other species in here that will do that. There is a few tench. Um, I think there's a handful of catfish as well. But what I'm seeing certainly strikes me as more carp feeding than anything else. The swim itself gives me a great view of my, if you like, my half of the lake. But it's also got an absolute fistful of features to fish to. I've got a wicked looking margin down to my right. I've got some, some lily pads, I've got some reed beds. I've had a good lead around in the open water and there's plenty of little spots amongst, amongst some smelly weed, I've got to be honest, but there's lots of hard landings in amongst it. So rather than just sit here and watch the lake with no rods in the water, I've just tied up a couple of solid bags because I feel I may as well have a couple of rods in the water. And when that is just a little handful of pellet with a single hook bait amongst it, it only takes one carp to drop down and you get a really quick bite. That's what I'm always trying to do, trying to get a fish on the bank as quickly as possible. So doing it that way, minimal disturbance, perfect presentation, and I can scan the water for signs and adapt from there. We'll see how it goes. Well, I suppose the solid bag approach has worked in some ways. I've not caught anything down there. The wind got up, so I couldn't see if there's any fizzing, but I noticed to my left in a little bit of slack water, I noticed that there was, I thought something broke the surface. When I've come down to investigate, sure enough, I saw a fish just down below the surface. So very, very weedy area. So I sprayed a few mixers out. Instantly, a fish appeared, not the one that I'd seen originally and started taking a few. Now I've got four taken, it's time for a cast. Let's see if we can get an early one on the bank. It's 
spooked one under that tree then. Oh, he missed it. Missed that one as well, not my one. Christ, that's not a bad fish. Oh, he's turned left instead of right. It's one fish, it's really erratic when he takes. I might try hooking a mixer in a minute rather than hair in it. Can't imagine they're that cute, but they clearly ain't idiots either. No! <laughs> that is unbelievable, him landing there. There's so much water in this area and he literally lands where I had him feeding. Mr. Swan, you might have scuppered my chances. Oh, we'll have a seagull having a pop now as well. Any more? Coots, mallards? Literally, since that swan's landed, I don't think a single mix has been taken. They might have just sort of shied around the trees a little bit. I'm sure they will come back out. They're gradually reappearing. Thankfully, Mr. Swan's had a free meal down here and he's left the main area alone and doesn't seem to be too bothered by them. The confidence they had before is definitely lower though. They're definitely less aggressive with their feeding, which doesn't make ideal floater fishing circumstances. Well, Mr. Swan well and truly scuppered me there, but always look for the positives. There's lots of fish in this half of the lake. They're really active and willing to feed. So I'm gonna go and get the rods out where I plan to, certainly put a bit of bait on one rod because in this amount of water, they're gonna find it. definitely cutting it a bit fine as you can see but um, to be fair if it hadn't been for that swan I'd have probably still been floater fishing now sort of carved out what felt like a, a real opportunity to get a bite there and you never really know where the next bites coming from being a new lake I couldn't pass that sort of opportunity up unfortunately the swan put paid to that so I'm background in the swim I found myself a couple of spots. I've got one out in the middle that I'm baiting now, which is just off the side of a set of lily pads. And I've kept one close in because this margin looks too good to ignore. Not putting loads of bait out. I'm going to put a, not, not, probably 20 or so spawns on this spot. Um, I've got a mixture of, I've got some 10 mil cell, some 10 mil essential cell. I've crumbed some, chopped some. I've got some sweet corn in there as well. And then the whole lot's covered in a, a couple of different oils, got some hemp oil, some foss oil. And it just makes the whole mix really, really attractive and gives it all a bit more pulling power. But we'll see what happens. The one in the margin is just fished over a little handful of tiger nuts. Uh, more of a, a little trap in a likely area than a feeding situation. But I'm excited. First night, new syndicate, and I know there's fish in front of me. Happy days. So 
first time, that'll do. I'll be honest, I'm not normally a fan of ghosties, but when it's 34 and a half pound and it's your first bite from a new lake, how can you not be happy? What a carp. Came on me left hand rod, which is over plenty of bait. Perhaps they're a little bit hungry. for a wander around the lake to try and see if I could get another surface opportunity because it feels a little bit dead at the moment in front of me. But rather than on the surface, I found a few fish right under a little snaggy looking area, real clean gravel spot. I've put some bait on it and they have literally started eating it straight away. There's a swim next to it. I'm gonna spoon a solid bag into position, see if I can nick a quick bite. Proper exciting fishing. In order to get this rig into position with the minimal fuss possible, I'm using a baiting spoon. I've got a solid bag in there. It means I can float it out right on top of the spot next to the snags and just literally tilt the pole and in it goes. Now you might think it looks like I'm fishing a bit too close to some snags and could potentially be putting a fish into danger. And you, you know, you could be right to think that, but the beauty with Carthagena and how Jerry runs the lake, I've had a good chat with him. I've had a good chat with the bailiff. Nearly all of the overhangs on this lake are exactly that, they're overhangs. There's virtually nothing underneath the water. And when you look in there from above, you can see it's just this beautiful gravel area. And either way that you look, they've got, they've got the safety of the canopy, but nothing down underneath that they can get caught up in. So I can ship this into position, safe in the knowledge that should I get a bite, and it's gonna be hairy stuff, it's gonna be exciting, but if I get a bite, I'm definitely not gonna leave a fish tethered to any of my line or rig and you should always know that before before fishing any sort of snaggy situation here we go feel like I've given it long enough. The fish haven't come back. I don't think I've seen nothing in there almost since having a rig in position. They were there to start with, but rather than just sit here and waste the whole day, we created that little opportunity. There could well be another one somewhere around the lake. Maybe on the top, maybe in the edge. Let's go and see what we can find.
Now, I'm obviously happy with how the session's gone, catching that lovely mid-30, but I can't help but feel a little bit frustrated as well. I've created two really good opportunities, one on the surface yesterday, one on the bottom today, right in the edge, where I've, I've seen fish feeding on my spot. I've had them feeding, but I've not managed to sort of turn that into a fish on the bank. So what I'm making sure now, I'm getting my rods back out for the night, the rod that I caught on in the early hours of this morning, I'm gonna make sure is absolutely nailed on, getting that drop that I want. I've already put some bait out, and then I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna do with the second rod. Now bear with me while I make this cast. Oh, ho, 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 ho. when it goes in first time, you can't help but be pleased. So yeah, I had a rod down this margin last night. Uh, nothing happened, no bleeps, no nothing. And there was quite a bit of activity out in front of me. So I've got this rod back over a bit of bait. And I think my plan of action is perhaps to have a little lead around out here as well, up against some of these old lily, lily pads and, and the weed, just to see if there's another firm spot like I'm fishing now to create two separate open water areas. That's definitely where the fish were. And at the minute, that's all I've got to go on for actually getting a bite. Wish me luck. Well, I'm very pleased to say that yet again, the rod out to the right of the swim has produced another fish this morning. I had it just before first light, so I've got him sulking in the net at the minute, give him a chance to recover and give me a chance to wake up properly. I felt really tired. I know it's silly, but when you go to bed at night and you're fishing, you want one of them to go. I actually went to bed thinking, how can I exact revenge on what they've done to me so far? Having them opportunities uh, on the top, and in the edge and, and not getting anything from it has made me absolutely determined to make it happen today. So as soon as I've done this fish, I'm gonna go round, I'm gonna start prepping a couple of spots then just keep watching to see if they turn back up. The wind feels a bit chillier today. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a surface opportunity or if we can get them back in the edge again, but I'm telling you, if I get an opportunity, I'm gonna put one on the bank from it. I'm gonna finish this, we'll have a look at that carp. Well, what a mega, mega cut up. 23-12, fought like his life depended on it. Ah, oh, I'm buzzing with him. I'm gonna enjoy my time on here, that's for sure. But I'm already getting itchy feet. I'm gonna get this one back. I think I'm gonna reel the rods in and go and start to have a wander and prep some spots and get my revenge. Didn't expect to get an opportunity quite this early, but already there's some fish back under the same tree that I was trying to catch one from yesterday. You remember the one, the one I failed at miserably. Well, today I'm gonna to do everything I can to put that right. Before I put a rig in position, I've just trickled a little bit of bait under the tree to keep them grazing around. And I just wanna show you exactly what I'm using, not only here, but out in open water where I've been catching from as well. It's a real simple mix. So there you go, look, I've got, um, I've got a couple of different boilies in there. I've got some cell and I've got some essential cell in a couple of different sizes. I've crumbed and chopped some up as well. So there's lots of little bits floating around the swim. Once they start eating these baits, that's, that's all they wanna do, continue to do exactly the same. I've also got some tiger nuts in there. Carp love to crunch things. Tiger nut is one of my, it's one of my favorite baits. It just seems to nick a bite sometimes when all else fails and they become a bit addicted to that crunch and to eating it. And then finally, the yellow peril. I've not fished a lake anywhere in the world that doesn't like sweet corn. It's a great attractor. It pulls them down to a spot due to how visual it is. And again, this whole little mix, once they start eating it, they just wanna keep eating more and more. I'm gonna make a slight little change from the rig that I went for yesterday. I went in with a solid bag approach. 
And whilst I'll, I'll back that nine times out of 10, it did look a little bit obvious under that tree. That big pile of bait on its own looked a little bit obvious. So instead, I'm going with my favoured spinner rig. I've got a size four Kamakura crank on there. I'm going to go with a yellow grain of fake maize. So the hook's going to lay flat on the deck and that's just going to leave a little bit of waftiness, if you like, for my single hook bait. Hopefully as they're coming in grazing around, because it's going to be moving a little bit, it's going to be one of the first things they pick up. That's the plan. Let's get a rig down there and let's exact revenge. Tell you what, it's a good job I've managed to have a couple of fish at night because no matter what I do in the edge, on the surface, I just can't get them to pick up my hook bait. Twice I've had them feeding, twice I've got a rig in position, and twice they've done the off. I'm gonna get the rods out, I've got the ump. You know what, I know I'm coming across as a little bit probably ungrateful because I can't catch these fish out the edge. I'm actually having a really good time here. Having areas where like I'm getting this spot I'm doing now, I'm just baiting up ready for the night. I want to get it absolutely spot on because it's the only spot I've actually managed to catch fish from. So I'm making sure that everything's done super accurate, ready for the night ahead. But then having the beauty of going hunting during the day, because that's what it feels like. You're trying to find them, get them feeding and catch them. And let's face it, two out of three things ain't bad. It's just the catching bit that's let me down a bit. But that's what keeps your grey matter ticking. That's what keeps you coming back. I want to get one from under that tree. It probably isn't going to happen this session, but you never know. I might get a little opportunity before we go tomorrow, but I'll be back. Don't you worry. And I will get one from under there. I'll work out what's spooking them. I'll put it right. And when I do land that fish, it'll feel like the best fish I've ever landed. But until then, let's concentrate on the night ahead. As I said earlier, bait wise, keeping it all exactly the same. I've got two types of boilie in there. I've got cell in 15 mil and 10 mil. I'm crushing some of that up as well. So I've got a load of crumb in the mix. I've got essential cell in 10 mil. I've got some tiger nuts as well, because carp just love to crunch the stuff and it's almost addictive. So they keep coming back for more. And then finally, I've got some sweet corn. It's so attractive. I'm fishing quite a deep area, probably probably 10 foot deep, um, judging by the time it takes the lead to go down and having something bright and visual on the bottom really pulls them down and they just start eating the whole lot. That, that buffet approach where you've got a bit for every taste, if you like. If they don't fancy tigers, they've got a boilie. If they don't fancy a boilie, they've got some sweet corn. And there's actually an important reason that I crumb a load of it up as well. There's lots of low lying weed and, and some sort of bigger weed beds. And by putting some crumb in the mix, it's like leaving a bit of a legacy on the spot. Even when the big items have been eaten, there's gonna be loads of taste, loads of flavor, loads of little bit of crumb that'll just keep them fish coming back time and time again. And it's, you know, it's proving to be effective. I'm fishing a pop-up over the top of the whole mix on a spinner rig. They're coming in, having a mooch around, and because of that low line weed, I wanted to make sure that my hook stands proud of it all. And so far, it's working an absolute treat. The final addition to my bait though, and there's, there's different things you can use. My preference is hemp oil. I like to give the whole lot a good glugging in the stuff and it does two things. It's a mega attractor anyway, so anything that's passed, it's, it sends out sort of a, a slick through the water column, which carp pick up on, drop down, and can cause them to start feeding. But also, during the day, when you're watching your spot, even if I'm not fishing it, if there's bait left down on the deck, when the fish come in and disturb it, little pockets of oil will come off and you get a slick coming off of your spot and you know that they're happily down there having a free feed. And if I've got rigs out when that's happening, I just sit and rub my hands together because it's only a matter of time before you get a bite. Two more spawns to go and we're ready.
Right, dude. The baiting's gone bang on. The rods are gone out bang on. The rest, down to you. Don't let me down. Good lad. Unfortunately, the session has just about come to a close and it didn't come to a close how I hoped. I went to bed last night full of anticipation because I really felt like I was gonna get another chance off of my productive spot, but unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. I did have a couple of liners then this morning at about quarter past five, so around the time that I've been getting the bites, I had a few little bleeps on the right hand rod and you just sit back and think, after a while, you know, was that just a liner? Did I get done? Who knows? One thing's for sure though, the fish have definitely migrated. The, the other side of the lake has done two bites and up until, uh, up until last night, it hadn't done anything. So the fish have definitely moved across and the only few fish that I did hear in the night were sort of to my right. I didn't hear anything out in front of me. But you know what? I've absolutely loved it. I love targeting new lakes. I love starting on a new syndicate, new day ticket, water, whatever it might be, because that's when I feel you start learning again. Uh, and whilst I didn't catch anything last night, the whole time I've been here has been a real good learning curve. When we walked on, I, I always asked the question about floaters because lots of lakes don't seem to respond to them or as far as anyone's concerned, they don't respond to them. Uh, but apparently they, they do take them in here, but there'd been no opportunities. The fish hadn't been showing themselves high in the water. And that first afternoon, I found a group of fish in the edge, got them taken confidently and had, in my opinion, an opportunity taken away from me thanks to a big old swan. Cheers for that, mate. But hey ho, uh, as the trip progressed, obviously caught one that first night, that mega mid 30. Um, to catch a 30 pounder on your first night in a new lake, I mean, that is that might be the first time I've ever done that. That's a real nice result. But that day found some fish in the edge. Again, carved out another opportunity, same as day three. Unfortunately, wasn't able to, uh, to capitalize. But again, that's where the learning curve comes in. I put a solid bag under there the first time and it looked a little bit obvious and the fish disappeared. Second day, I went back to my favoured spinner rig just with a single grain of fake maize with a little bit more bait in. And they were definitely having a little pick around, but I still don't know what it was because they've not turned back up for me to, to try and prove my theories. But something with my line lay maybe definitely puts them off and they just seem to eke out and they don't pick up any more bait. And then coming back round into this swim, getting the baits out last night. I felt like I got one spot nailed and I know I fished it as effectively on night three as I did nights one and two. And I honestly don't believe there was enough fish out there to perhaps get that, um, a, that attack mode when, that, when there's more than one feed, fish feeding, that competitiveness. I don't think that was happening, which is what has maybe cost me that opportunity where I just wasn't on as many fish. One thing's for sure though, I've loved every minute and I cannot wait to get back because I am catching one from under that tree at some point. See you next time.